Hey everybody, Modern Native here. Down at Kenny Otto Creek again. Gonna enjoy a couple of nights maybe. Uh, just gonna bring you guys along. Gonna do... Haven't decided what style of video I'm gonna do. I might do a longer one about the whole camping experience and the camping trip. And I'm gonna put out a couple on uh, plan on doing the fundamentals of camping or the camping basics. Just a checklist and thought list for people who just get fresh into camping and don't really know how to start or where, like, what they want to check off and stuff. Um, and just a few pointers and thoughts that I have with that. <coughs> um, but for this video, for what this section is going to be included in this clip, uh, will be included in the larger video. Uh, probably about just bringing you guys along on this uh, couple of days camping trip. Uh, just to get away, decompress. It's one of those. Just enjoying one of my favorite spots. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, checking in. I did some firewood collection. Then I dug the Dakota fire pit. After I had set up my tarp and my hammock, I love I love the diamond hang. Setting it up oblong so I can have the long protection on the sides. And that goes over so I can even sit right next to the fire pit and still have protection. My stuff over there, I just got to scoot it around this side of the tree a little bit more and it's protected. And my bike's waterproof so it can stay out even though it's an e-bike. And I have just a few guy ropes, guy lines tied out to keep it nice and stable and protected and I tucked my extra length of strap back up into one of the holes to act as a drip line if it happens to rain it's a little uh, tip for you guys there but yeah that is my hammock hang all nice and set up having you guys check it out from this angle This is my camp for the next oh, couple days, maybe. Alrighty. So now we're going to work on getting a fire set up in the fire pit in the Dakota fire hole. Alrighty, guys. So I'm going to do a little wood processing and set up a fire. Like I said, I found my roll of jute. I took off some of the stuff that ended up catching the weather rotting it off so I'm going to use this as my bird's nest fire starter found a feather stuck it in my hat gonna call it macaroni medium sticks down here get a pile of the tiny tiny little guys get a pile of that going what I did was I grabbed uh, some of the longer branches that are over in the wood pile over there that had a bunch of these tiny branches hanging off Work smarter, not harder, so you grab the big branches, drag that over to your campsite, and then process it there so that way you're not breaking down a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, it's only 20 feet for me, but you know, so that way you're not breaking down a bunch of stuff and carrying over a big pile. You just drag over a bunch of the long branches with a whole bunch of the little offshoots on it. And then you can just process everything right here. And anything that breaks off, snaps off, you can, it's landing all over me, next to me, and in the hole. So, it's all going to end up in the fire. 
just keeps it a little more organized. Hoping my mic isn't blocked by the dirt. Got my phone wedged up in the dirt, made my own little uh, primitive phone stand. It's not my main phone, it's just one that I use for recording, so why some of the recordings look different. I don't know which one has better quality. I kind of feel like this one does oddly, even though my main phone is slightly supposed to be better. But that's not always the case. Mm, punky. That's a good starter, though. Wasn't quite punk wood, but it's just like right on that edge of almost being punk wood. But that's such a small branch that if it was any more punkier, it would just turn to dust. I mean, dust. So. And the reason I show you guys this where I'm breaking down wood and that's like mainly what I'm doing. Uh, i show you guys just to see that it doesn't have to be a whole ordeal and expedition to deal with your firewood. I mean, you see I'm doing it mostly with just my hands and sitting down comfortably just doing it just to process it, make my fire. Like I said, work smarter, not harder. I saved this feather because this is a huge, I think it's a turkey feather, it's a huge feather and it's just so pretty I wanted to save it. And it's got like a fat end onto it. You could literally just clip the tip off and slide a whole ballpoint ink cartridge in there and it'll take it and just hold it. And then you got a nice little quill. Although with something like this, I'd probably put a calligraphy tip into it and use it for an actual dip quill. Alright, I got a good pile going. One second. So what I've been doing the last couple minutes, in just a couple minutes, just breaking some of the jute twine down. It's still holding a lot of moisture, so I wanted to break it down into the individual strands and then kind of break it apart into the fibers just to get a good amount of fiber going. I'm going to keep some of it solid, still twist it up together because once I get this little bit to go, this will go just fine. And it's just, it's been sitting out in the rain literally just sitting out on the ground in the rain for uh, two weeks so it's just needing to get a little bit of surface area for it to catch for when I throw some sparks at it. I'm going to use the ferro rod for this one again um, I'm not going to be every time I have a fire every time I do a fire video I'm not going to use the ferro rod every single time because well, I've said it in a couple of posts. I've said it in some comments. Uh, survival, uh, bushcrafting, being in the outdoors. In my opinion, it's 90% preparedness. Your chances of survival, your comfort level, it's 90% preparedness. 5% um, skill, 5% luck. That's kind of how I got it breaking down. Because if you make sure you are prepared, you are prepared for any situation. So your survival should be pretty guaranteed if you are properly prepared. So I'm not going to use a ferro rod every single time that I start a fire to just show how Billy Badass I am at being a survivalist. That, In my opinion, it's just, there's no need for it. 90% of the time, I'm just going to pull out my Bic lighter and fires on. I'm prepared. I brought a lighter. 
I have multiple forms of starting a fire at all times, so it's, if you're prepared and you have it, use it. So that's why I don't see the need in using a ferro rod every single time. But, like I said, I will be doing it this time, once again, just to prove the point that I do know how to, I do know how to do it and I know I know how to survive. There's been the occasional individual who has questioned my ability to survive. And I just find that funny to begin with and uh, kind of asinine to, without meeting someone, without genuinely questioning them on what they know is their ability to survive, you judge them and assume that they don't know how. When I, in fact, know how to survive indefinitely. My ferro rod got a little rough there. There we go. A little wetter than I thought. Oh damn. I had a feeling I should have processed more of that, but yeah, this this bundle of jute is just so wet. Alright, so what I've been doing now is I switched over instead of trying that wet jute anymore because that's just too wet wasn't gonna do it it's been soaking on the ground gonna have to give it a couple of days to dry out I got this hemp fiber uh, cordage um, twine and I'm pretty sure this is the hemp stuff I've just been breaking it down to its fibers, making a little nest. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the ferro rod. This stuff, pretty sure it's only once I should have to hit it. When I use the spark wheel, only needs once. The spark wheel isn't as efficient as a ferro rod. All right, it's a little easier, and if you're working with something like this, at least it will catch. But, um... This should be nice and easy with the ferro rod. This stuff is super dry. It's been sitting in my pack forever. <laughs> there you go. Nice little. And this will flare up super fast, but I got my sticks right here. All nice and ready. Okay, so and let there be fire.
flipped it over just a little too fast, but we still got a flame, so it should catch. This stuff is super dry. Hey guys, sorry, I actually forgot I paused it, but it's a roaring, well, it's a quiet roar. Fire's going, all nice and happy, and uh, just chilling out next to the fire, it's nice. Even when it's hot out, which it's not hot out right now, but even when it's warm, still enjoy a fire. There's something different about the heat. It's just so pleasing. Although, cell phones and heat that close may not be the best idea. Squish. Can y'all still hear me? So, I'm gonna let this warm up. I might start processing some firewood for later. Bigger stuff with the saw. But y'all can tune in in the next step. So while I was thinking about it, made a little bench. I'm not sitting on it right now because I just was getting the beans ready, cracking the can, throwing it on the fire in a minute. But I wanted to just show you guys this real quick. Oh, it's just a little simple bench. I uh, diagonal lashed it together here, and then diagonal lashed the other one. I put a little, I don't know, U-notch, whatever. I, I just chopped at it a little bit until it fit nice and right. And then I diagonal lashed it across on the top just to hold it together to have a nice little bench seat so I can sit in front of the fire and not be sitting on the ground all the time. So there you go. Bushcraft bench. Beans. Oh yeah. So hey guys, it's been uh, a really wet, soggy afternoon turning into an evening, and my bushcraft bench, that my temporary little bench that I showed you guys, uh, the reason it looks shoddy is because I didn't even cut the, plant, the, the line, I just connected it together, it's literally just loosely connecting together just for something for me to sit on. It's not like a permanent bench before people go start criticizing it. But my bench also works as a sawhorse. So I can sit here when I'm on the ground and just sit here and comfortably saw it. It's a little more comfortable than when I had it on my leg in my other video I showed you guys. But it still works. I've been taking my time with this stuff because this stuff is super hard and it's not wanting to cut because it's also wet and all I've got is a handsaw. But it's working, it's just a work in progress, so I'm just chilling out next to the fire. Comfortably just sawing as I go. This is a pretty big piece, like this is the size of my forearm kind of piece. And it's super hard, but it's been seasoned in the bark, which made it super hard. 
more so than usual because all these like I said this is a cleared out area for people who have an ATV trail through here and a dirt bike trail so they've cleared out a lot of the small trees that fill up the ground cover and they've left them in nine giant piles so they've been just drying and seasoning and drying and seasoning and they've just been getting they're just primo firewood though You always get that excited little burst towards the end when you know you're almost through. But that's my little sawing tip. If you make a little bench and it's got a V set in it, you can just use it as a sawhorse. As you need to. Alright. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have anything more to go on tonight. May do another video tomorrow. Trying to make sure I pump them out, especially because I'm taking the opportunity while I'm out here to do the filming. Uh, ah, tomorrow I might do a sharpening video. Uh, one of my new subscribers, he was asking about sharpening and sharpening stones and how you sharpen your stuff. So I'm going to show you guys my take and my style on how I sharpen stones. I have a puck and I have three sharpening stones, little hand stones, and varying uh, grit all the way down to two polishing stones. So I'll show you guys my process that tomorrow, but this was my wood saw tip.